What is up, Navigation Nation? Today is Friday, February 16th. Welcome to this week's video update. What a crazy ride we've seen in the market lately. Um, you know, obviously had that big sell-off and then a huge bounce this week. Uh, looking at SPY here, S&P 500. Uh, but the good thing for us is volatility is back. So giving us some good opportunity to put on trades, uh, adjust trades, and, and really that two-sided action is what we love as, as premium sellers and as traders in general. So hopefully we, uh, we get to keep some of this. Hopefully this two-sided action continues and we don't just kind of rip higher and, and, and grind higher. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, that was such a long grind higher that we are definitely due for some two-sided action, which we are, uh, which we're getting now. So, looking all good. Uh, let's jump into the alerts for the week. Don't forget, also Monday is President's Day, so the equity markets will be closed. Futures market will be open. I think part of the day, but we won't be doing any trading. So, take a long weekend and get ready for Tuesday. So, if we go to the first trade alert, which we put on Monday the twelfth, it was an opening trade. Did an iron condor in SPY. So if we take a look at our Analyze tab to, to look at where that's at, obviously with the move up today, uh, price is still within our range, but could use a little bit of a down, down move to benefit that trade. Next, we had a closing adjusting trade in wheat. So we closed out of our put vertical side as the price had, had moved up and breached our upside break even. So still holding on to the call vertical as well as another full iron condor. So if we take a look at where we're at on wheat, uh, you can see the here's the uh, remaining vertical after we took off the put side, so it could use a little bit of downside to benefit that piece. And then we've got on this other full iron condor, uh, which is really centered. Not quite enough profit to take off yet, a uh, little over 25% of max profit at this point. So waiting for a little more before we book that one. And I mentioned this last week, but uh, we're we're almost to the, we're actually profitable in wheat now after all these adjustments that we've been doing the last few cycles. And so once we get out of these two trades, we will probably close out of wheat and, and, and book that trade. And I'm gonna do a, a full video on that trade because there are so many adjustments and roles that I wanna show you kind of the power of the mechanics of, of, or excuse me, the power of staying mechanical with your adjustments and extending that duration uh, to become profitable on the trade. So look forward to that once we get out of wheat. Next trade was in Apple. So what we did here is we bought a long put vertical. And what after this, after the big down move in the market, what happened is, you know, I talk about this all the time, how we like to keep short delta. Let's go back to the chart of SPY. You know, we like to keep short delta in our portfolio. Well, we got this huge move down, which benefited many of our positions and it benefited our portfolio overall. But what happens when that when it goes down like that is you naturally lose some of that short delta and start to uh, accumulate some long delta. So down here, we started to get to the point where we were actually long delta and we needed to add in some short positions to help protect ourselves in case this thing uh, made an another push lower. Now that didn't happen, it, it kind of ripped higher on us. But one of the ways we did that is we looked at Apple and put on a long put vertical in Apple. So uh, with, with the market rising this week, with Apple rising, uh, we are, we're currently down on this trade, but you can see it, uh, we need, so we need Apple to come back down, back into our range. But this also, you know, it keeps that short delta in our portfolio. So we're actually at a really good spot right now overall. Uh, with the amount of trades that we have on, we just have a little bit of short delta, pretty balanced overall. Uh, so while this trade is moving against us, uh, we, we've benefited overall. So that's where that piece comes into play. Next trade was a closing trade in forward slash 6E, which is the Euro futures. So we had, <coughs> excuse me, we had sold a short strangle in 6E, and we were able to get out of that book a profit of around 45% of max profit. So nice trade there. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in DIA. So we, here we closed out the call vertical side of an iron condor. Price had breached our downside break even uh, in that big down move. Uh, so we closed out that uh, untested side and still holding uh, two other call verticals in the portfolio in DIA. So let's take a look at DIA. So here is one of our call verticals. So obviously with this move up, we could use a little bit of a down movement to benefit that one. 
And then same with this call vertical here, where we need some downside movement to benefit that piece. And then the trade alert that I just mentioned, where we took off the call vertical side, still holding the put. So price moved back into our range here, which benefited this one. So looking for a little bit more of an up move or for price just to kind of stay right where it is uh, to, to benefit that piece. And then we'll, we'll take that one off and continue to manage our DIA trade. Next trade was an opening adjusting trade in Ford slash ZN. So we already had one position on in ZN and with price and volatility the way they were, we wanted to add another piece to this. So we added a short strangle. And so let's take a look if we, if we look at our graph. So this was the position we had on previously, which was an adjusted strangle, which is basically adjusted into a straddle. So centered at that 121 and a half price. And then the alert that I just mentioned was the addition of this uh, strangle here. So we've, we're up on this piece, but uh, not enough to take off yet. So we'll continue to monitor and manage that one. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in IWM. So we only had this on for six days, booked a profit of over 30% of max profit in just six days on this piece. Uh, but we're still holding another piece to our IWM trade, which is the other half, the uh, the put vertical half of this iron condor. So price has come back into this range nicely. Uh, could use a little bit more up movement to benefit that. But look next week for a another piece to be added to this. So we'll add another iron condor in IWM next week. With, the, with where we're at in the cycle, so we've only got 28 days left in March, so I'm not going to be adding any more positions in March. So next week we will be, we'll start to uh, start adding positions in April. So we've got some April positions in some of our options on futures pieces, but as far as equity goes, next week is when we'll start, start adding to that because we're getting down to that 60 day mark uh, next week. So look for that in IWM. Next trade was a closing adjusting trade in ES. So we had an iron condor on in ES and uh, we booked that for about 35% of max profit. So that was a good trade. Uh, we've got a couple other positions on in ES, which I'll get to here in just a second. Uh, next trade was a closing adjusting trade in XRT. So we had two different adjusted strangles on in XRT. We bought one of those back, closed out of that one. Uh, and we're still holding one other piece in, in XRT. So if we take a look at that, what you'll see here is, uh, is right here. So getting close to, uh, to profits overall, there's the closing bell. I'm recording this just as the market's closing. But um, so, so we've got this uh, additional piece left in XRT. So we'll continue to monitor and manage that. And we're almost at uh, being profitable on our XRT trade in totality after adjustments, but um, still uh, still looking for a little bit more profit here before we get out. Next trade was opening adjusting trade in ES. So as I mentioned, we'd, we'd closed that one out and we added another one a couple days later. So if we take a look at forward slash ES, this is our iron condor here, still very centered. Just uh, Just looking for some more time to pass there. And then we've also got this uh, long put vertical, which is again, adding short Delta to our portfolio with the, with the move higher, uh, it's, it's moved up on us. So we need a little bit of down movement to benefit that piece. Next trade was an opening trade in forward slash 6E. So we had closed out of one strangle in 6E, implied volatility continues to stay high. So we added another piece here. So if we take a look at that, you can see you can see that's still very centered, no profit or loss at this point. So just looking for some IB contraction and or uh, you know some time to pass to benefit that one. And next trade was a closing adjusting trade in XLV. So we closed out of our put vertical side of uh, Iron Condor in XLV and uh, still holding the call vertical as well as another full Iron Condor. So if we take a look at XLV. We've got these two pieces. So this is our full iron condor. Could use a little bit of up movement and contraction in IV there. And then if we take a look, if we click off that one, here's the remaining call vertical side of this one. So this one could use a little bit of a downside. So we've got one piece of it. 
that could use a little upside, one piece that could use a little downside. If you if you click on all of them together, you can kind of see an, an aggregate, which which doesn't look very appealing. So we're obviously managing these two pieces of the trade separately, uh, but but a lot of times we can we can benefit and and uh, and book profits in both, assuming price accommodates us. So we'll see what happens there. But looking looking okay in XLV. And then lastly, we bought back our strangle in IBM. So this is one that we've had on for three cycles and we had to make five different adjustments, but we stayed mechanical and we were able to close it out for a small winner. So, uh, you know, that was IBM. That was one that we put on originally as a post earnings short straddle. So if we take a look at a chart of IBM, we're out of the trade, so the graph won't show anything. But if we take a look at the chart, what we'll see is uh, we put this on way back here at this at the last earning cycle. So uh, price popped up. We we put on a, a a straddle here, a post earnings short straddle. Had a huge move down, so we had to adjust and roll. Rolled out to the next cycle. Rolled out to the next cycle. Had a big move up. Continued to make adjustments. We made like I said five adjustments in total. Then price came back down and we were able to book uh, book a profit today. So again, that's just the power of staying mechanical, doing your adjustments, making the necessary rolls as you're supposed to, and you end up coming out with a profit. Sometimes it just takes a few cycles to do so. So perfect example of, of, of how those uh, adjustments can work for you. So those are all our trades. Let, let's take a look at some of the other positions we have. We've got an iron condor in Natty Gas. Uh, you can see it's hanging out kind of near the lower end of the range, so it could use a little bit of up move in Nat Gas to benefit that one. I already mentioned ZN. Uh, we've got an iron condor in soybeans, so use a little bit of a down movement. It's more time to pass in soybeans. I already mentioned wheat. I already mentioned Apple, DIA, EEM. So this is another one that we had originally put on for some short delta. Now, I got a couple of questions about this because price was all the way up here at one point, and so we could have, have booked a profit, but that was also at the point where we had, uh, uh, the, the overall market had kind of sucked out a lot of our short delta like I talked about before, and so we were really keeping it on for more short delta for that downside protection in case the, the market continued to move lower and, and using it as, as one piece of our overall portfolio. And you know, obviously, unfortunately, the market ripped higher today, so that that you know took the the profit of, that we did have out of EEM. But we still got to continue to manage these these trades as a portfolio, and and I, I I keep pounding that home, but it's but it's critical because you just you don't know what the market's going to do. You can take assumptions, and you know uh, if you did want to book profit when it was down here around this price, hey, I don't I don't have anything against you doing that. Uh, I'm showing you with these alerts what I'm doing and the way that we manage these as a total portfolio. So hope that's helpful. Hope, hopefully that makes sense. EWW, we've still got a trade on in there. So close to, close to taking profits in EWW. Just need a little bit more after the adjustments and rolls that we've, we've had here. Uh, we're almost to profit in EWW. And exact same thing with EWZ. Uh, very centered, just looking for a little bit more profit before we book that one. Hopefully, with this long weekend, we get a little uh, theta decay, and, and you know, early next week, we're able to, to book some profits in a, in a couple of these. FXI, we've got two positions on in FXI. This uh, adjusted strangle, which is now a straddle centered at the 50 level, so almost close to taking this one off as well. And then we've got this other piece, which is the 4148. So this is one where because we had this position on. When price was down here, and we needed uh, some up movement, so what I did is is I left that one on, added this one, and it was kind of a skewed, skewed strangle, meaning it, we had more downside, uh, more room to the downside because of this other piece that we already had on. Now with the up move in price, you can see price has uh, breached through the break even, but I wanted to give it over the weekend. So if price stays where it is or continues a little bit higher. We will adjust this by taking off the put side. You can see there's still a little bit of premium in there. We're at about $112 out of $135 max. So we'll look to make that adjustment uh, sometime early next week unless price you know, fires back down into our range here. So stay tuned for that. 
GLD, we've got an iron condor in here, nice and centered. Just need a little bit more time to pass, a little bit more uh, contraction in IV to benefit GLD. You can see IV staying nice and high in here still. The percentile at the 90th uh, IV rank at 62, so still getting some good IV in there. I mentioned IWM, QQQ. So we've got, we've got two different pieces on in QQQ, a couple of, of short call verticals. Uh, need a little bit of down movement to benefit those pieces. And similar to EEM, you know, these were actually fairly profitable at, you know, early in the week. And it was a, a point where, you know, you could have taken profits in those. Uh, and then, but, but again, we needed that short delta in our portfolio. So we, we kept them on hoping for a little bit more. Uh, obviously with the up move, we're, we're still almost in our range here. So just need a little bit of a down movement to benefit those. I mentioned SPY, XLU, uh, we've got this iron condor on here, very centered, close to a point where we can start thinking about taking profits. With a tight iron condor like this, I'm not going to wait for 40% profit, but I would like to see you know, 30, 30%. So we're almost there. Hopefully get to take that off early next week. XLV I mentioned, XOP, so we've got a strangle on in XOP. Uh, just need a little bit of a price movement up, a little bit more contraction in implied volatility, and we should be able to book a winner there early next week, hopefully. If we take a look at the charts, again, implied volatility staying nice and high in that. And lastly, XRT. So uh, I actually already mentioned this. So we've got this, this last piece of XRT left, trying to get a little bit more profit before we take that one off. So that's where we're at. The, uh, the other thing I just wanted to mention again and kind of reiterate is, is look at the portfolio that we have. We've got the euro. We've got the S&P 500, so large cap stocks. We've got nat gas. We've got notes. We've got soybeans. We've got wheat. We've got some individual stocks like Apple. Uh, we've got DIA. We've got uh, emerging markets ETF. We get the Mexican ETF. We have the Brazilian ETF. We have the Chinese ETF. We have gold, small cap, NASDAQ, which is mostly technology stocks. SPY, S&P 500, we've got utilities, healthcare, oil, and retail. So such a, a great mix. I love where we're sitting right in here, both from the, uh, the variety of, of, of underlying symbols and the diversification there, and with the amount of short delta we have overall in our portfolio, I really like where we're sitting. Hopefully the, uh, the market accommodates and we keep some of this two-sided action and high implied volatility. We'll continue to book profits, put trades on, book profits, and rinse and repeat. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, markets close Monday. We will get back at it on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Talk to you then.